What's good, YouTube? You already know who it is. It's your girl, J Way, and she likes it my way. What? What's good, YouTube? What's good, people? Welcome back to my channel, boy. Y'all making me blush. Yo, it's been a cool minute since I posted a video. Like, let's just keep it a buck. Like, mm. it's been a cool minute. It's been, it's given, goddamn. Excuse my French. I don't even know the rules and regulations no more on this platform. You know what I'm saying? That's how long I've been gone. So, obviously, I don't have to tell y'all that I've been gone for a minute. Um, it shows. I haven't posted on my channel, but I'm back and I'm better now. Um, and so, this video, I don't really have a clear direction of how I want this video to be laid out, what exactly I want to talk about or anything like that, I just know that I'm just gonna come on here and give y'all the real raw scoop. So, first off, welcome back to my channel. First off, thank you for clicking on this video because I know y'all haven't seen me in the grip. First off, thank you for the people who have been continuously still watching my content, old videos, or people who are new and are watching my old videos. I thank you so much for that, I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else. Um, and yeah, you know what I'm saying? I apologize that we had a breakup for a minute and I was just gone for a year like that. Like where they do that at, but you know, life happens and, and life was just tagging at it. <laughs> but, um, nah, y'all. Um, so yeah, I know in like the last, last video, that I posted, which obviously was a year ago. Um, it has said that I took a road trip to North Carolina. Now, those of you who are new to my channel are not gonna know this, but those of you who are not new to my channel, um, y'all know that I'm from Boston originally. You know, Shane, born and raised, being town all day. You know what I'm saying? 617A. But no, so I'm originally from Boston or whatever, but um, as of now, I am a North Carolina resident. So I no longer live in Boston. I moved out. <laughs> girl, finally moved up out her mama's house. Okay, that was the goal, honey. The goal was, girl, you need to be on your own, in your own establishment. Being ground paying bills at the age of 13. And to my great surprise, it happened. I, 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 had, I had to thank for a second, girl. How low is you? Yeah, and also birthday's coming out. Yeah, you know I'm saying. F finna be the big 31. But no. All right, so, all right, for real. No jokes aside, y'all. So, yeah, um, yeah, I used to live in Boston. I was born and raised in Boston. And I just recently, not even just recently, but um, I'm now a North Carolina resident. And I've been out here for about two years. It's coming up on two years. I make two years in um, June. So, yeah, you know, um, when I came down here, I had a lot of stuff going on. Um, I was constantly on the go. So I didn't really have time to sort of pick up the camera and stuff like that, you know, saying it was just a lot of things was happening sporadically back to back to back to back to back. And so I sort of got caught up in the windfall of like just life and just being out on my own, you know what I'm saying? Not that like I wasn't on my own in Boston. Look at this, I hate how this little piece is hanging. But anyways, it's not that like I wasn't on my own in Boston. Obviously when I was in Boston, I was still living with my parents. Um, so it was sort of like, 
you know, yeah, I, I was I was old enough to do what I wanted, but I didn't have that luxury of going and coming as I please. Because, you know, when you grow up in a black <laughs> household, it don't matter how old you get. If you ain't really kicking out that dough, contributing to the household that you're living in, then technically, girl... That's still your parents' house. That's still your mama's house. You still got to listen to when she say, you know, how they be going off. So that was sort of what I was going through when I was living uh, with my mom and, you know, my parents and stuff like that. See, see the good lights coming out. The good lights coming out. It's getting good. Stay tuned. Keep keep watching. While you're bad, go on, click the like button. You know what I'm saying? If you want to subscribe, subscribe. If not, keep listening. But all in all, so yeah. That was pretty much what I was going through when I was um, living with my, my parents. And so, um, you know, I just sort of just went for it and decided to move to North Carolina. Now, I know y'all like, girl, in the last video, you said, oh, you took a road trip to North Carolina to go and visit your shorty. Okay, so that's also new. I am in a relationship. Um, I've been in a relationship now for two years. Well, coming up on two years. Um, this is my first relationship where I've lived in the same household with a female, like where I see you every day. We split bills, we freaking, you know what I'm saying? We arguing like cats and dogs. Uh, I'm getting tired of you, you get tired of me, you know what I'm saying? I'm coming home, you here, I leave work, you there, you know what I'm saying, and vice versa. And it's definitely um, something different that I'm not used to. Um, the difference is, it's something that I enjoy, but it's different to me. So, you know, it comes with its pros and cons, you know what I'm saying? Living with someone um, can be difficult, especially because I went from living with people all my whole life too when I finally get my own spot you know I'm still technically living with someone it's just in a different manner because this is a person that I'm intimate with you know what I'm saying it's my girlfriend so you know all in all that's different and it's new and it's it's exciting excuse me y'all but allergy season but it's also you know it comes with it living with someone you know so y'all know how relationships work you get on each other's nerves the, but yeah so um, me and my girlfriend live together, and so um, that's also new. So, like I was saying, um, I originally came down here. She came to see me in Boston uh, for like a week, and then I was like, all right, um, let me go see what your hometown is hitting for. Like, let me go see what North Carolina is about. And so she was cool with it, and she was like, okay, um, yeah, come down. So I was originally supposed to come down here for three days tops. Um, three days turned into a week. Then a week turned into stay to 4th of July because I came like around around that time. I came like at the end of June, early July. So three days turned into a week. A week turned into stay until the 4th of July. 4th of July turned into stay until the end of the summer. And then the end of the summer turned into here we are. It's two years. Now, I know some of you are probably curious like, okay, well, did it just happen like I just kept missing out on time and so you just sort of stayed down there? No, it wasn't like that. It was just like, um, you know, we were both like really, I'm not gonna say we're not infatuated with each other anymore, but we were both like really infatuated with each other. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was new and it was, it was exciting. And so we just sort of just went with it. And so I like North Carolina and um, I decided to stay. Um, so that's pretty much the new thing, but also, man, listen, so much has been happening. So it's, I don't even know what, okay. So, all right. I moved, came down here for my girlfriend. Um, uh, let's see. So, okay. Obviously I'm telling you guys that like we are in our own spot this is my first spot that i ever had so that's also new but there were things child it was not easy okay by all means moving from a different state and uh, 
the way how I went about it was I wasn't financially stable. I wasn't financially set up to just, to just do a big jump and move um, 15 hours, 20 something hours away. You know what I'm saying? I believe that's like how long it would take. Like if you drove from Boston to North Carolina, it's probably like 20 hours and some change. You know what I'm saying? And that's pretty far. You know what I'm saying? I don't drive. Obviously, I'm in the works of that. But I don't drive. And it's just like, you know, I'm the only child, my mom's only child. So for me to be on my own for the first time and be so many miles away, it, it's it's scary. Um, it was something I had to adjust to, but it has taught me a lot. I have never knew I had all this inner strength that I've, I've, I've gained, I've mastered since living on my own. You know what I'm saying? Even with me having a girlfriend, you know what I'm saying? It's still new to me you know what i'm saying and so um that was something that at first you know was just taking me by my head and dragging me it was just dragging me you know what i'm saying so um that's that was another reason why i wasn't really uploading because i'm um, not gonna lie i did a lot of house hopping you know what i'm saying i went from living in hotels, to living in rooming houses, to living in another rooming house, to living in a hotel. Um, and just recently before we got this apartment, um, I've been in this apartment for a month. It made a month today is May 2nd. So technically yesterday made it a month, but obviously still a month, it being the second. And so, yeah, like it made it a month um, yesterday. And so, but before we even got into this apartment, which I'm so freaking grateful for, I'm so grateful for, I mean, I don't want to get emotional. I'm just so grateful. Like I have been through a lot since the last time you guys have seen me, a lot of things has like really happened with me, but, um, all in all, yeah. So we, we were recently in a hotel. Um, the last hotel that we were in, we stayed in that hotel for, let's see, I think we got in that hotel August, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. We, we left the hotel like uh, early April, like mid April. So that's like what? Seven months, close to eight months. Why my shirt look all sideways? I don't know what's going on in my hair, y'all. Don't judge me. Don't judge. Don't judge me. But yeah, so like I'm saying, um, yeah, we stayed in the hotel for a grip, at least like seven months. And um, you know, it was very humbling. Uh, because I'm I, I don't you know, I never like I said, I never experienced living on my own, and I never experienced being on my own for a long time where I'm not in the same state as my mom. Uh, she's not like a phone call away. I could just run and ask her, hey, X, Y, and Z, can you help me with this? So it was a lot of independence that, somebody just texted me, I'm sorry, heads all tilts. And, but anyways, it was a lot of um, experience that I, I, I experienced. It's a lot of things that I had to experience to get to where I am now, and I'm very thankful for them. Um, and so, like I said, yeah, I had to thug it out. Um, I'm not ashamed of it. It's something that comes with the game. You know what I'm saying? When you move to another state and you do it on, uh, like, sort of, like, off just impulse, you sort of don't have a plan because it's off impulse. So, basically, what I'm saying is I didn't go into it me moving with a plan. It's sort of something that just naturally unfolded. You know what I'm saying? Um... And there were some bumps along the road, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? And so we had stayed in a, um, a hotel for a while, you know what I'm saying? Um, and just grinded, got us together, um, you know, worked, saved money. Um, I've met some good people through her and we've met some good people um, together that were there for us when times were hard, you know, money was practically not there non-existent and you know but all okay i'm not gonna really get into all of that because all of that's gonna come on you know y'all i'm still gonna give y'all story times um about the things that i've been through because y'all got to know um so all in all that's all that was sort of like happening um and then you know obviously i'm kicking it with a girl who i'm seeing 
uh, you know, my shorty, my lady, I'm seeing you every day. I've never been in a relationship where I've been around someone constantly every day and you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying it's hard for me because I used to be a little pimp you know what I'm saying so it's, it's it was just like that's why I really wasn't uploading because I just been like I was just like just living I had time you know I thought about y'all I really did think about y'all because you know YouTube became a part of who I am it's still a part of who I am you know regardless if I never get a red cent out of making videos I genuinely like doing this you know what I'm saying whether my my platform blows up or it stays where it's at or however however which way God wants it to go I personally will probably still upload because I genuinely like to upload will I be hurt you know what I'm saying that it ain't all boom boom big yeah but when you do something genuinely that you enjoy doing it's priceless and so anyways yeah i definitely did miss y'all but i was just like going through a lot and so i didn't have time to pick up the camera okay so that's one then here's another here's another reason y'all because i gotta i gotta i gotta a valid reason because i know y'all probably like well and girl you probably ain't love us that much yeah you all in love now you can't pick up the camera Okay, but then also, my iPhone 11 got stolen. I don't know if I lost it. I don't know if it got stolen. All in all, when I went to go look for it, it was no longer in my possession. Heated. Pissed. Okay? Because for a minute there, I was, out of, I was without a phone for a minute. Then I, get, then I did get um, two other phones after I lost my iPhone 11. They weren't iPhones, they were Androids. So then, you know, being having an iPhone, you get used to having a phone with their, after a certain amount of time. You just typically save your passwords to your phone. You know, we got face recognition, all of that. So then once I did come in contact, come in contact? <laughs> once I did get like new phones, it was like, damn, I can't remember my Gmail password. I couldn't remember my Facebook password. I couldn't remember my Instagram password. I couldn't remember Snapchat. Like every type of social media you can think of that I used to be on, literally, I could not remember the password to save my get my. And so it was just like, damn. And then, you know, like the more you play around with it and try to like, um, like put in the password it would like kind of like lock you out so i never really attempted to do that with gmail because you know when you whenever you have a gmail account technically you already have a youtube you just have to post on it you know what i'm saying because they're like compatible i can't really explain it but if you know you know so anyways that that's another thing that had happened and so it was just like damn all right now i got phone again you know what i'm saying where i could possibly upload or at least check my social medias and it was like I really couldn't remember no no password so that was a whole big debacle and then I want to say like probably I have an iPhone 14 now but like probably um I don't know how long ago but anyways I got a new phone an iPhone 14 like I was just telling y'all and so I was I was not willing to let it go I'm like no I work hard but my YouTube channel I don't give a damn if, excuse my French, I don't give a damn if wh whoever thinks whatever about it, like, oh, girl, you're not even that big. Oh, the content really don't be hitting. It's mine. I've worked for it. I put my time and energy into it, and I'm not willing to just let it go because a phone is gone or because I can't figure out or am accept accessible to my laptop at home where I could just quickly go in and change my password. So... I wasn't willing to let y'all go like that. You know what I'm saying? That's how you got to know that I love. Y'all had to know that I was coming back. Okay? So, I had got a new phone. Um, I just, I had to do some research. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot of account recovery. Them asking me for my old, old, this is a number that I had years ago. They, that, I guess that's what Apple or iCloud had had on file. So I had to go through all that. Finally got in. Once I got into my Gmail, I try to tell y'all, I like to jump out my skin. I'm like, yo, yes, I'm back. I got my shit back. So it felt really great to gain access to it again. 
um, see my old stuff still be there. Obviously check Instagram, obviously check my Facebook. Like people, like it was like I was just disconnected from the world for almost close to two years. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like I know a couple of people hit me up like, yo, you okay? You good? Like you just fell off the face of the earth because it's not like me, you know what I'm saying? I'm not just uh, a person who's totally into social media, like where it's like something I have to do every day. I will take my moments where I'll take a break, but it's not like me to not post on nothing for days, for weeks, for months, over a year. So, and that's sort of what it was. So it was very refreshing to gain access to all of those platforms back because obviously um, being on uh, social media is something that I love to do because I do uh, want to be a social media influencer, you know what I'm saying? In which other way and format that comes, whether it be YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know what I'm saying? Boom. So that's what happened. That's another reason why um, I couldn't upload. So yeah, then you guys... Um, Oh, hold on. Let me just move it because this is going to totally F with me. So, and then um, just recently, so what is this? We're in May. I want to say before Thanksgiving, um, sorry, the coffee. I really want to smoke a cigarette so bad right now, y'all, but I don't know how the rules and platforms is on youtube anymore so i'm gonna come back i'm gonna pause it and come back well y'all really don't need to know that because i'm gonna edit it a certain way but i'm gonna come right back all right y'all so like i was saying I'm, I'm back i'm back i'm 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 back for my smoke break quick intermission so i think i left off where i was saying um just a few months ago like it was like before thanksgiving of 2020 January, December. Okay, so it wasn't, I, I, whatever. It was, yeah, okay, so it was the November of 2022. Um, and your girl, your girl, your girl was skinny, okay? Um, before I even, like, wait, okay, if you look at my old, old videos when I first, first started doing YouTube, I obviously wasn't this skinny. Um, so I was already like losing weight. And so in 2022 of November, I remember me and my girlfriend, uh, was like laying in the bed, we was in a hotel and just obviously as time was going on, since I've been down here, you know, significantly, I, I, I noticed like my weight was decreasing. I was getting skinnier, but I, I was more so thinking that. Um, I was just underneath a lot of stress, you know, just trying to become stable on my feet, find me a consistent job that I actually want to be at longevity instead of sort of like bouncing around. And then obviously us being on the hunt for a, a home and not living in rooming houses, nothing against rooming houses at all. You know what I'm saying? Right now, the way things are set up, it, it's hard to live on your own. You know what I'm saying? So no shade, no tea against none of that. It was just like, you know what I'm saying? I, I really wanted my own spot you know what i'm saying we both wanted that so that was something that we were striving to get but in the process of all of that like i would notice people would say like oh you know dang gary you're getting skinny you're getting skinny like i said i was already i was already pretty slim but i started to get skinny okay and so people was constantly telling me like oh you know girl you look as skinny look as skinny look as skinny and so i was just taking it as ah yeah i know stressing you know i was doing a lot of walking um at the time a lot of walking uh, i enjoy walking a great deal but um so yeah i was doing a lot of walking and stuff like that but then it became extremely noticeable to myself and then, you know, I sent a couple of pictures to my mom and she's looking like, yeah, girl, what's going on? You like really dropping weight. So when it became like slightly, uh, what would be the word? Like, okay, something might be going on was when I was underneath a hundred pounds. So I was underneath a hundred pounds 
because typically okay before i moved down to north carolina i had lost a, a good amount of weight i was into the fitness eating clean still into that but i haven't worked out in a minute but i was into um you know working out eating clean getting my skin together all that extra stuff and so um i want to say before i left north before i left boston i had to be all about probably we'll say 110 115 maybe maybe close to 120 definitely less than 125 so all in all at one point um i was less than 100 pounds and so i still didn't go to the doctor still thinking like oh it's nothing i'm just stressed you know I'm not really eating as much, you know what I'm saying? We eating out and stuff, and then I'm walking it off. So I'm not really thinking. And the type of job that I had at the time was a job where you're pretty much on your feet all day. You do a lot of walking. So I'm just thinking like, okay, yeah, I may be eating fast and unhealthy foods, but it's not like really sticking to my body because of all of the walking that I do at the job that I was previously at. And so that was my mindset. Um, so then I remember, um, this one evening, uh, me and my, my girl was laying in the bed or whatever, and we was at the hotel. We wasn't in an apartment then. We was at the hotel and I had took off my clothes to go get in the shower and, uh, she, she was laying in the bed. She was on her phone. So I didn't think she noticed anything. And so when I went into the bathroom, I looked at myself and I was... A skeleton like I was just literally bones and um, I remember coming out of the bathroom and saying to her oh my god babe like no like I I'm getting way too skinny like something is wrong I'm like I am I dying and so she's like yeah it it's getting scary like it's, it's a scary thing it's a, it's a unhealthy looking skinny like a sickly looking skinny because you know you got that skinny where it's like okay she's slim she's skinny must be active and then you got that oh that person's skinny you look kind of sickly <clears throat> that's pretty much how it was looking and so i remember that i had sent a picture to my mom um i would insert the picture to show y'all but it's kind of like me practically nude and so uh yeah i sent the picture to my, my mother bucket my mother uh, yeah that's my mom so anyways i sent the picture to my mom and i remember my mom being like oh no 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 you need to go to the doctor something is wrong you're losing too much weight and so <clears throat> that next following day me and my girl was supposed to go to work i was feeling really sluggish and i'm just like babe you know i, I can't do it. i don't feel good and the feeling that i was feeling wasn't like oh my god <coughs> like a a sick type of call like a sick type of feeling like a cold or anything it was like literally my body felt so ran down like sluggish to the point like it kind of gave it, it's in order to explain it the best that i can to my abilities would be like you having a hangover the next day and you're just like damn i just want to lay in the bed i just want to lay down type of ordeal and so um i remember telling her that and so she was like well okay we're gonna call it a word <clears throat> but you're not because I, I kept pushing it off like she'd be like okay let's go to the dogs i'd be like no nah, girl you good i just need a rest i just need a gatorade or i just need to double up on my water intake <clears throat> eat a little clean and so she was not going for that and so we ended up going to the doctor's emergency room and so we go to the emergency room and, um, you know, we get in triage, which is where they basically just, you know, checking your regular vitals, asking you, like, what you in here for? What are you feeling? And so I'm explaining all of that. So I'm like, you know, just really feeling tired. It's not like me to be always so tired. Um, then I'm like, um, I've lost a significant amount of weight. Um, so that's one of the concerns. And so they've just, they ran my blood. Um, they took a urine sample, uh, they asked me about my smoking of uh, nicotine. They asked me, like, was I on drugs? Like, did I do any type of drugs? I'm like, no. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, and so, yeah, that's, like, all the, the the questions that they asked. And so they had brought me back. Um, and then I think, I can't remember if I was hooked up to an IV or not. But I know that they did say I was a little dehydrated. Um, next thing I know, I guess the test had finally come back. I think we had, we had went from sitting in the ER to the triage, which is where you're like basically about to go behind back. 
but now they have like an update of why you're there. And so after that part, that was when we went to the back part, but now I wasn't in the room yet. So we had went to the back part and I remember the labs had came back and they told that I was um, diabetic, that it looked like I might be um, diabetic. It looked like that I might have <clears throat> diabetes. And literally I was deaf. I was so devastated. I was so <laughs> devastated, you guys. I'm sorry to tell you. I was literally so devastated because I'm miles away from my family. Um, I've never been hospitalized a day in my life. I've never had any type of surgery. I never broken a bone by the grace of God. All these things have never, ever happened to me. I never had no major illness. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if I can recall for me being young till now, the most I've ever probably really been, been sick was probably like in high school. This was like ninth grade. I had caught pneumonia. That was probably the worst I've ever really been sick. Anything else like a regular common cold, nothing. Don't have no allergies, nothing. You know what I'm saying? All that by the grace of God, I never broke no bones, none of that. So when they told me diabetes, it was just like, what? What? Diabetes? And so I initially just broke down. I cried. Uh, my girlfriend was there with me and she heard it. Uh, I immediately just broke down. I called my mom. I'm being all hysterical on the phone with her and just like, oh my God, they're saying I got diabetes and da 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 da. So immediately they was just like, uh, it looks like I'm, I'm a diabetic. Uh, my sugar when I went in was extreme high i believe it was over 600 a little past 600 pretty much uh, way higher than it should be uh for a person who isn't diabetic you know what i'm saying like for a person with the average a1c or um sugar levels it should not be that high and the fact that it was that high um they was telling me that literally it was good that i came in because I could have died, um, I could have passed out, like a, a lot of things could have happened, my kidneys could have shut down, um, so it was just a lot to take in at, at the present moment, and then also, you know, I was just going through a lot where, like, you know, say I was looking for a house, I didn't like living in the hotel that we were in, granted, I was always thankful because I've always, since I've been down here, not always, but, uh, Pretty much since I've been down here, I had a roof over my head. There have been other troubling times where I didn't, but me and my shorty always pretty much had some type of shelter. Was it the best shelter living conditions? Probably not, but that's something that comes with the territory when you you out there, you growing, you on your own, you ain't got no guidance, you know what I'm saying? As far as no guidance, like you're doing it on your own, you know what I'm saying? So all in all, scratch all of that. Just to get back to the point, I was just devastated. Um, I initially calmed down. Um, my mom was like, oh, do I want her to catch a flight? She'll come down here. And I was like, no, I don't want you to miss out on work. It's not that serious. I'm okay. Um, my girlfriend's here with me, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So then they was like, um, yeah, more than likely you're not going home tonight. You're probably going to have to stay. And so I was devastated to hear that because, like I said, I've never been admitted to a hospital for anything. Like, I've never stayed overnight at a hospital for it being, <clears throat> so excuse me, I'm so sorry, excuse me. I never been um, overnight at a, I never been admitted to a hospital. You know what I'm saying? I never stayed overnight for it being for me. I've been there for family members, you know what I'm saying? Staying with them, keeping them. <clears throat> so I need to get that water. For being with family members, but never for me. So when they were saying all this to me, y'all, I was literally devastated. I'm like, nah, like this cannot be my life. Diabetes, what? And so they weren't really like when they told me that they weren't really like sure because they didn't run the, the labs exactly for diabetes. But just being uh, my condition, the weight and uh, me telling them my symptoms, my symptoms and then my sugar level being that high, just them if they had to give a quick um, if they had to give a quick um, what you call it? like a quick diagnosis of what could possibly be going on. It was definitely leading more so, oh, I'm possibly diabetic. And so <clears throat> that's 
Then shortly after that, it was definitely confirmed I was diabetic. Um, I got admitted, they gave me a little bracelet, you know what I'm saying? They took me upstairs to my room. I met with like a diabetes specialist. I can't think of the proper word right now. I was still so very devastated. I'm gonna show y'all the pictures of like when I was in like the elevator in, this, in the wheelchair and it was bringing me up. And stuff like that. And so that's pretty much what happened, y'all. Um, I stayed in the hospital for about um, three days. Um, and so, you know, they were just, it was just a lot. They were just telling me like, oh, you're going to have to change your diet. You're going to have to eat healthy and all of this stuff that just was mind blowing to me at the time. And so, um, at the time I, I was, I knew that I was diabetic. They told me that I was diabetic, but for people who don't know, there are two types of diabetics. There's type one diabetic and there's type two diabetic. Now, type 2 diabetes are people who are not born with, like, who are not born being diabetic. Uh, it's, some, it's something mostly where they developed it or they were borderline pre-diabetic and then became diabetic or they aren't doing enough exercising or they're eating not all the proper things or just... You know, say you're not really treating your body good. Then there's type one diabetes where the pancreas. I don't, don't. I might not be saying it right, but I know that the pancreas does not produce enough insulin, so that when the body does intake sugar, it can break those sugar levels down, where the sugar is not staying within the bloodstream, which causes the sugar to be raised high. So. They were more so leaning to type 1, which is the one I was just explaining to y'all, the pancreas. And then uh, the reason why I was so devastated with it, again, was because now with type 2 people, you don't have to take insulin. Some people do take insulin and some people just take a pill. You know what I'm saying? Either way, I was still unhappy with it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because uh, I don't want to have diabetes. You know, saying so nobody wants to be sickly, and that's how I was looking at it at that time. But, anyways, so all in all, um, type two typically they just take a pill form to keep it moderate to, to keep it uh, stabilized, you know what I'm saying? And versus a type one diabetic, they have to take insulin every day, they have to take insulin before they eat, you know what I'm saying, meals. Um, and so they were they had me on insulin while I was um, in the hospital. You know what I'm saying? But I was more so leaning to hopefully I'm a type two where I could just take a pill and, you know, go about my merry go business. Um, but in a the hospital, they kept giving me insulin. It was more so like they were kind of going round about it because I was trying to be like, well, are you guys sure? You know, hopefully I'm a type two, like a type two, you know, maybe I could just take a pill and I'll be OK. And I was like, yeah, but it's kind of looking like, you know, you might be type type one. So we're going to do stick to insulin while you're here. Then when you go home, we're going to give you some insulin until the test comes back as to which type of diabetic you are. And so me being um, as faithful as I am and believing that the, the good Lord will let the let the verdict be in my favor type 2 diabetic it had ended up turning out i think i found out after i got released out of the hospital i think i had found out like a week later some change that i was type 1 so then that was another hard pill to swallow i remember i was literally on the phone with shorty the lady who, who called me and she was like she was real nice um she was calling me like every, like once i got out the hospital she was calling me checking checking in with me seeing if i'm knowing how to do the insulin and inject it and stuff like that and so i remember when they told me that um who child i found myself getting a little emotional but i remember when they told me that i was like um type one it like really broke me down because i was like I don't want to be sickly, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to have to be someone who has to inject themselves every day. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to have to have that. And I just felt like, like, why me? You know what I'm saying? I don't know if people got, dog, I'm so mad I'm crying, but I don't know if people got bigger things going on. Like, people got cancer, you know, some stuff like you know, there's no cure for it. Granted, there's no cure for what I have either. But it's something that if you take care of yourself and you 
watch what you eat and exercise. And, um, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I just didn't want to have type one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I really didn't want to have that. And because of the way how I was taking it at the time, and it still messes messes with me to this day. It's like I I I, I don't want to see myself as sickly because I know I'm not sickly. You know what I'm saying? I've always been a strong headed girl. I've been through a lot in my life, and I remember just going through a, a, a tough time when I lost uh, my grandmother and. I remember like being just so depressed, <laughs> so depressed. I could laugh about it now, you know what I'm saying? Cause I, I, I've, I've, I've made it out of that hole. I know what it's like, you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry y'all, but it took me back to a moment where I just thought about like how I was just so depressed and I was in a dark place for a long time. Even when I started YouTube, like when I first started, I was depressed then and that's when I started the YouTube. So. Initially, when they told me, like, type one, it was just like, damn, like, I don't want to go back down this rabbit hole of now, oh, my God, you're sick, leave something to be, like, ashamed about or, like, my life was going to be totally different. Like, granted, it's different, but it's not a death sentence, you know what I'm saying? And so it took a minute to, like, just to, I'm so sorry for the crying, y'all. My face probably look all ashy. <laughs> I've got an ugly cry but anyways it took a minute for me to digest it you know I was just like damn I, I was really hoping for that I could just take a pill and you know sort of just have the pill version of diabetes where you know because with 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 type 2 diabetes also which I didn't explain to y'all with type 2 diabetes if you if you have that and they give you the pill the pill, the, they give you the pill where you monitor, you're monitoring your diabetes with a pill and it's being controlled by a pill. You very much have the potential to become, uh, to not be a type two diabetic anymore where you're no longer diabetic. So I was really hoping for that, you know? And so when I, when it came about that, it was type one, it's, it was kind of like, like you're forever going to have this. You're forever going to have to check your, you know, prick my finger and check the blood and see what my blood sugar is. I'm gonna forever have to take insulin. Um, but I'm also still a strong believer in, in my girlfriend is definitely a strong believer that, you know, uh, if, if God can heal someone of, of not having cancer anymore, that maybe, you know, I, I could beat this diabetes where I don't have to take insulin every day. You know what I'm saying? He works in mysterious ways and he does miracles all the time. But um, again, it was told to me, so it was more devastating news again. It was told to me that <clears throat> I was a type one. And so um, I had to accept it for what it was. Like, girl, you're diabetic and you're type one. So there's no reason for you to lose grip of life anymore. It's just, you know, I really got to... <clears throat> watch what I'm eating, watch what I'm intaking, all of that stuff. And so that was something, damn the light. Anyways, so that was something that took a minute for me to um, sort of like uh, get out of my head and like stop being so mopey about it and just be like, okay, this is what it is. This is what you know you gotta do. And this is what the you're gonna do and you're gonna be fine and you're still gonna live a normal healthy life and all of that extra stuff so it's pretty devastating again but i eventually got over it don't get me wrong i still do have my days sometimes where i'd be like damn i really don't want to do all this like checking my sugar i don't really want to you know not eat that because i enjoy that like let me let me give you a perfect scenario of how I be feeling with a type one diabetic. Say you in a in a call with friends, you show to your girl, and y'all go pick up, y'all go get something to eat at a fast food rest, a fast food restaurant, whatever. And you know, burgers and fries is a, a spot, a joint that y'all went to. So you know, when you in the car and you just nibbling on some fries and stuff like that, or if you be like, shit, I'm hungry as hell right now. Let me just hurry up and indulge in my fries and then get home and you know, eat my burger and drink my juice and all that. I typically, I typically 
can't do that anymore because I literally have to check my sugar first, make sure that it's at a decent level so that if I do eat the fries, it's not going to have my sugar being skyrocketed. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's semi sort of how I could break it down. But um, so, yeah, it was confirmed that I was type one and I was devastated as heck. And um, like I said, it still plays on, on my conscience to this day. Um, but I've been managing it fairly well. Um, doing what I got to do and all of that good stuff. They did have me on the needle and um, vase thing. Like the old school, you get the vase and like you got to draw the needle back and then you inject it. I'm no longer on that, thank God. Because I, I think that was another thing that sort of had me like... Because, you know, when you see someone with that, like the insulin and a, um, I forget the, the correct terminology for it, but I'm just going to call it a little, like a, like a little thing. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It was like, damn, you, you I, I, like immediately my, how my mind takes it is like, damn, that person is sickly. So now that I got the pens, it's kind of like, you know, whatever. Matter of fact, I'm gonna get up and show y'all. Give me one second. I'll be right back. When you see someone with the, um, like when they're drawn, you have to draw it out of the, I forget the word for it, but y'all know what I'm talking about. So like every time I would have to do that before I got these things, I would think like, oh my God, it just made me feel more sickly than I really am. But at the time, um, that was what they had. That was what, sorry, somebody was texting me. That's what they had initially gave me. And uh, maybe like a couple of months ago, they ended up giving me this. I don't know if y'all can see it. So that's one of my insulins. This one is called uh, Novolog. And this is the one that I take um, three times a day. You're supposed to take it before every real meal. Uh, and so I don't really eat three meals a day. If anything, I'll eat breakfast and then obviously dinner. So I just take this whenever I'm really about to have like a meal meal. You know what I'm saying? And then this is the other one that I take. <clears throat> Let me see if y'all can see it. It's called Lantus. This is the one that I take um, every morning. I have to take this every morning before like, I even start my day. And so, th yeah, those are the two um, insulins that I'm on. So anyone who's, who's out there that's diabetic or that is pre-diabetic or uh, type 2 diabetic, know that like we're going to be fine. We're going to live long, healthy lives. We just got to make sure that we take care of each other. Be there for each other because a lot of people do. A lot of people that you see regularly and don't know literally have diabetes and they maintain a, a, a normal living life. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's just that, you know, we just got to be extra cautious of how we care for our bodies and what we are intaking in our bodies. I'm just going to put these right here. Um, what we're intaking in our bodies and just overall staying healthy. And so... That's pretty much what it is. I'm a type one diabetic. Um, so I, I know, I don't know if any, I, I know I'm doing a lot of talking. I'm hurry up and skip past this so we can get to the nitty gritty. Um, but I know a lot of people are probably like, wow, like how come, you know, you didn't, didn't know about this. So um, I, I was very curious about that myself. I was just like, you know, out of all these years, because like I said, type one is typically people who are like born with it. You know what I'm saying? And in my family, um, I, I believe my grandfather was uh, diabetic and then my aunt who was still living very much healthy, very much alive, has all her limbs. She's also type one diabetic too. So it's not like uh, a lot, it runs in my family deeply, like a lot of family members have it. But um, so it was surprising that like I had it. And then, like I said, type one, dip, tip, typically you're born with it. So when I was asking, cause I asked the nurses that, and the doctors and it was like yeah that is true type one is typically where you're born with it your pancreas doesn't work as well as uh, a person who's non-diabetic where they can take a whole bunch of sugar and carbohydrates and their their pancreas will break down that sugar so it's not staying in their bloodstream which like i said causes the blood sugar to rise and so mine doesn't really do that it basically doesn't work at all so me taking the insulin helps my helps me and taking insulin helps my body break down those sugars so that when I do have a little bit of sugar, because like you can't avoid sugar in life and you can't avoid carbohydrates in life. So it's like when I do and take, when I do ingest those things, me taking insulin helps my pancreas 
uh, break down those sugars and helps my body break down those sugars. And so um, <clears throat> I remember asking him, like, how come this wasn't detected like years ago? You know what I'm saying? Like, I've, I've always, you know, went to the doctors and had checkups and stuff like that. And they were just like, oh, um, you had late late diagnosis uh type 1 diabetes or something like that so basically it was like it was just it's and it's very it's pretty much it really is very much a thing where it's called late diagnosis type 1 diabetic or something like that i can't forget i forget the exact terminology to be honest i'm getting a little sad talking about it so i'm just gonna hurry up and overpass that but um so yeah y'all that's what happened um uh, <laughs> i got sick and um child it was bad so i remember i had told y'all i was like under 100 pounds but then at one point when i was in the hospital they had um checked my weight like before i got admitted into like my room y'all a girl was down okay i look cross-eyed but i was 82 pounds 82 now, here I am, a 29-year-old woman, because at that time, I wasn't 30 yet. No, no, I lied. I was 30. And I'm like, 82 pounds? Bitch, you crazy. I said, oh, this is so sad. So, yeah, I was 82 pounds. But being in there, like, them getting me on my right medications and stuff like that, I did gain a little bit of weight. And then, <clears throat> as of recently, I think I'm like 113. Very much looking back healthy now, not uh, still slim, but I'm not like where it's like, oh, she's skinny, but she looks sickly. So that's all, you know, taken care of. I got my medicines. I'm doing good with that. I'm doing what I need to do to stay alive and functional. I do have my days where she, diabetes does have me feeling a little sick and does have me feeling a little sluggish. But, you know, that's that's with anything. That's with just life. OK, <clears throat> so. Yeah, your girl is back and better, okay? Back and better. And like I said, to anybody who's really going through anything, don't let it, like, or, like, has been diagnosed with anything or who is pre-diabetic, don't let it, like, defeat you because it's not the end-all, be-all. Just take care of yourself. Do what the doctor suggests. Also look into natural um, remedies that are good for diabetics. And, you know, just know that it's going to be fine. I'm going to do <clears throat> more videos about my... I am so thirsty. I'm going to do more videos about my, um, like my journey along with this diabetes, just for people who are curious or, um, going through that or, uh, would want to know more about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, as I go along with this journey and I educate myself, um, I definitely don't mind sharing that with y'all because wisdom is best shared. And so that's what I'll be doing. But so all in all, that's pretty much what was happening with me over the course of um the year and some change that i was gone not on youtube so like i said i'm back on my social media platforms you already know i'm gonna have everything in the description box where well, everything is already always in the description box so you can follow me on my platforms i'm probably gonna put it on the, on the um on the screen if y'all want to follow me but now that we got all of that um I guess you could say sad stuff out of our system. You know, the girl had a little, little tear jerker. You know, they just ask you, are you okay? You just have to go with it. No, I wasn't okay just a few minutes ago. But see how the sun is coming out. It's always a bright day. So now I'm going to show y'all my little apartment and stuff like that. Now, hold on, as you can see, okay, it ain't fully furnished. Okay, so don't come for me in the comments. Don't come for me in the comments. All of that, y'all can nip that in the bud, okay? Boom. So I'm going to pick up this camera. I'm going to come back, and then I'm going to show y'all. Okay, okay, guys. So that's my apartment number, B3, blessed three times. Okay, so I'm going to flip it. Let me see if I can. When you first come in, this is sort of like the living room area you know say that's why i just was recording for y'all and that uh, is the door and stuff got a little balcony but i'll show y'all that um like i said i don't have any furniture in here yet so don't talk crap um that's the wi-fi this is the window 
This is the window. Hopefully I'm not covering the mic. That's the window. This is the little AC joint. You know what I'm saying? Obviously we got little hardwood floors. You know what I'm saying? That I'm not mad at. This is technically, I guess this would be like the coat closet. But for right now, we just have our Swiffer in there and our broom. And then obviously right here, this is where I was recording at. This was sort of be like the entertainment center. So if I come back a little bit, you guys can sort of like get a gist of what I'm talking about. So like this would be like where the TV and stuff is going to go and the couch. We're not really sure yet exactly how we're going to, um, you know, have it set up. But that's how it would be. And then, you know, obviously you can control the temperature. This is the light, whatever, whatever. Um, and then this is our refrigerator right here, a little dishwasher right there, another window. Uh, we have a little plant. Pray for it because it's going through something. Um, don't mind the dishes. Don't mind, don't look at the dishes. Y'all don't see that. Y'all don't see that. But then obviously we gotta get a trash bag, you know. Y'all know how y'all y'all know how it is on we do on that little trash bag. Um, like I said, don't talk about the dishes. Um microwave stove then over here is like our little snacks so you know got a little something something in there obviously waters we have like four cases of water which down to our last two um so this will kind of be like the pantry i guess you guys um i love 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 the microwave i love how it's like in there and i love love the stove and so then we just have like this little thing right here where I guess you would call it like, I don't know what you call this thing, but that's where I was recording off. And so these are little chairs that um, I was sitting in. Um, my girlfriend's family gave those to us. And then this right here is like our main bedroom. <clears throat> we recently just got this furniture but we don't sleep in here just yet because as you can see we do have a mattress but um and it's a it's a nice mattress it's a queen i forget if it's um i forget like the name of it but like when you let me just show y'all so like when you like lay on it and sit on it it's like it just why wow, my hands look so dark it's like it like it like goes with your body i can't explain it but it's a queen. All in all, what I was trying to say to y'all is we're trying, we're in the process of getting a, um, what you call a block spring. So we're like a little up more higher. So we're not sleeping in here for that reason. And then this is just the um, furniture. There goes, there goes me. Mm -hmm. Still sexy. But yeah, <laughs> that's the um, dresser. And this is um, one of the other dresses. Um, probably gonna put the TV on top of it and that's the little nightstand. And then we have a closet now. I'm gonna show y'all real quick because everything is not set up and I don't want y'all in my business like that. So then you do the, look at the closet, <laughs> boom. Uh, but yeah, so that's one of the bedrooms. This is how it looks when you like, you know, shut the door. That's the light, got a little ceiling fan. You control the thermostat and the lights. So this is the bedroom. Then I'm gonna take you guys right here this is like the linen closet where we keep our stuff toiletries stuff like that etc cetera, etc cetera. then this is where the boiler room is and we keep our other little junk stuff yeah 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 then this is our bathroom you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying shower etc boom you get the gist of it you know what i'm saying I don't really want y'all to see me right now, but because, you know, yeah, whatever. So, like, this is the bathroom. Okay. FYI, I was, I'm being as raw and authentic as possible. No, it ain't like my crib is dirty, but it's not like also like I was about to clean up and shit like that. Well, finna do all that. So, then this is a second bedroom. We have a TV, like I was saying. Um, yeah, it's a high sense TV. It comes with the little, the legs, but we don't have a Phillips screwdriver yet. So, it's just leaning on the wall. That's the window. We have a queen size blow up, um, a queen size blow up, um, mattress or whatever that we sleeping on. Da -da -da -da. This is a little closet. So this will be, you know, a little trash bag, shit like that. And you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Got the little ceiling fan, all of that, the lights, little affirmations on the wall. You know what I'm saying? All of that, you know? So all of Basically guys, yeah, that's pretty much the apartment right now i'm just standing on like this little balcony thing um as you can see so yeah that's pretty much 
all in all, that's pretty much, um, yeah, all in all, that's pretty much the, that's pretty much the gist of it. Again, I want to say just thank you guys to everyone who has been with me. Let me see if I can put y'all right here. But yeah, so that's pretty much the gist of everything. I hope you guys can hear me because like I said, I'm outside. But that's pretty much the gist of everything that I've been um, going through or like the life update of everything that I've been going through. Like I said, I'm definitely grateful to be on my own. I'm definitely grateful to be alive because with that whole diabetes scare, I literally could have been dead had I waited any longer to go and get checked out but I'm at a healthy weight now um I'm back into working out like I said me and my girlfriend are stable and we're on our feet and you know things are looking up for us so I'm definitely happy about that it comes through nothing but the Lord and just staying positive and focused and knowing that whenever you're in a, a bad situation or a situation that you want to get out of and you want to strive to have better for i'm sorry i'm sort of like in the days that's why i'm looking but yeah boom <laughs> uh whenever you're in a situation that you want to get out of and you're sh you want to strive to have better you got to keep the faith you know what i'm saying i'm sorry i definitely see is that like that's that look like a wasp a wasp nest but anyways y'all I ain't gonna be out here too long with that. I never even seen that till just now. But no, so like, you know, if you're just in a situation where you feel like it's not going to get better or nothing is going to change, you just gotta keep the faith and know that it will. And so pretty much that's what we did. We finally got our apartment. But um I'm definitely gonna keep y'all updated and um take y'all along the journey as we like decorate the house and furnish it. Um as far as me and my girlfriend, um if she likes to be on camera you know i'm not sure how she feels about all of that she doesn't really do the whole internet thing like how as much as i do but and you know what I'm saying if she wants to be on camera then she go calling me right now but like if she wants to be on camera obviously i'll put her on camera and like we could do some videos for you guys if you want but and yeah i just want to say thank you guys so much for rocking with me you already know who it is it's your girl J way and she likes it my way thank you guys so much for clicking on this video staying in tune with me and caring about me and just um rocking with me with this journey and to anyone who wants to subscribe to my channel please feel free to it's definitely free all you gotta do is hit the like button and all you have to do is subscribe you know what I'm saying stay tuned for more content y'all already know story times is definitely coming back um, y'all already know, um, yeah, we back in effect now. Balboa savings and loan. Set it off. No, sir. But, yeah. Um, yeah, we, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just stay tuned, um, for the journey, for the new life update. And I love y'all. I thank y'all. And always remember, good energy, breathe and believe and i appreciate you guys so much for walk with, rocking with me and um it was so hard for me to jump back on camera because <laughs> i just been through a lot but you know what confidence is everything and no matter what i go through what i look like what changes with me ain't nobody gonna tell me i'm out no fire ass or like i'm gonna pop my 24 7 365 i'm gonna pop so much you gonna think that i'm the one that took your virginity you feel me okay don't play with it don't play with it come on baby don't play with it but yeah i'm out you guys i hope this video was cool to y'all and uh let's just see how i do on the editing and hopefully y'all show me love peace